someone's belief, they're going to get very desperate to defend it. There's also a large body of evidence saying that the person doesn't exist. Um, feel free to, I don't want to quote it exactly, but I think his name is Lauren Mosher. Um, he was the head of schizophrenic research uh, at the Institute of Mental Health. So he's like, the guy. And he concluded that depression is not a real disease because in 100% of cases, there's nothing actually wrong with the brain. He says, I can't detect anything wrong with the brain. All the brain scans they show you in depressed people, you can just take a brain scan of someone having an orgasm. Those are chemicals in the brain. You can see it. That does not mean that the person's got a mental disorder. They, you can see the depression in their brain because they've accepted they're depressed. The, the, the brain didn't change and then make them the depressed. People got the wrong way around. So yeah, of course, everyone feels depressed temporarily. I've been depressed. Everyone, bad things happen to everybody. You have a choice of let it consume you. How did you snap out of your, your unhappiness, depression? Well, uh, I snapped out of it because I understand that it's the only choice there is. Was there a method you did? You know, like... I don't think there's a specific method. You just have to be. You just have to be harsh about the realities of the world. Life doesn't give a fuck about you. Everyone who you're crying to your problems about doesn't really care. And you have to. You have to get it over with. You know, like bad things happen to everybody. They're going to happen to everybody. Uh, and then we all die. So you have two choices. You can let the bad things consume you, or you can wake up one day and think, ah, enough of this, and you've got to push forward. famous tweet was when I said depression wasn't real. And I had A-list celebrities. I had the girl from Game of Thrones. I had fucking literally A-list guys. And everyone's telling me how, how dangerous my mindset is. What is dangerous about believing that you control your own mind? Because if you implement the four things I've just told you, depression becomes, a, becomes garbage. Depression is not a thing anymore. Feeling depressed is real. You can be depressed with your situation. I just told you, number two, get depressed, that's fine. But believing you can fix it yourself is the important key. Sitting there believing that depression is some monster from the sky that strikes your brain and now you have no control over it and you must take pills every day is the absolute enemy to a G mindset. I don't give a fuck how depressing my situation. The only person who can change it is me. The only person who can change how I feel about my situation or try and affect the situation directly is me. Even if you put me in a situation I can't change, if you put me in jail and I'm depressed because I'm in jail, I still refuse to succumb to depression. I refuse to collapse mentally and give up. I will know the only person who can control my mind is me. Nobody's coming to save me. No doctor with a pill is coming to save me. Depression isn't real. Depression is a state of mind designed to motivate you to find a life that doesn't depress you any further. That's all it is. Now you have to decide, are you man enough to go and get it done or are you going to sit around and cry? And depression, the reason I talk about depression a lot is because depression in the Western world is to cure all. It's to cure all excuse. This is what people are using. My life's shit because I'm depressed. No, you're depressed because your life is shit. It's the other way around and you're refusing to acknowledge that and you want to sit there and live a shit life and pretend that some disease has struck you. And the reason you know that's bullshit, anyone out there who's depressed, I'll tell you something, you're not depressed, you're a coward. And the reason you're a coward is as follows. You desperately try to defend this crippling ailment you have. When I tell you depression isn't real, you message me pages and pages, desperate to convince me I'm wrong, that depression is a real thing, and that your life is terrible, and this ailment has destroyed your life because you're desperate to defend your excuse. If depression was really terrible, you wouldn't want to defend it. If depression was really so bad, and I'm telling you it's not real, and I know how to fix you, and that if you implement a mindset like mine, you become immune to depression. If depression was so terrible, you'd listen to me and think, I need to try what this guy does. I need to do. If, if he's immune to depression, it's impossible to depress him. I need to be like this man. But instead, no, you don't want to do that. You want to call me names and sit and defend this ailment because you know it's garbage. It's your excuse. It's your blanket. It's your shield. It's your excuse you get to pull out every time you look at your failure of a life. And that's why depression is absolutely and utterly not real. And anyone who's bought this course who thinks they're depressed, I'll tell you something now. Drop that coward bullshit. If you're watching this and you're depressed, drop and give me 200 press-ups. Do 200 press-ups. Look in the mirror, look in the, your eyes and tell yourself you're the fucking man and drop that garbage because you can get absolutely nowhere in your life if you believe in that crap. Depression absolutely isn't real. And that you're going to say this to people and they're going to fucking go nuts at you. They're going to call you arrogant and they're going to call you all the things they called me but your life is going to be a life worth living. You know, say you were running the depression camp, how would you get people out of their depressed? I, I get them out of the depression by making them understand the harsh realities of the world. And the harsh realities of the world is that life doesn't give a fuck about you. Life doesn't give a shit about you. If, if, if a lion goes to hunt some gazelle, let's say you're a lion and you're chilling, and you see a whole bunch of antelope in the corner, when the lions start chasing the antelope, 
they get the slowest, weakest antelope. They get the babies, they get the one who's sick, they get the one who's got a broken leg. They don't give a fuck. They're not gonna be like, oh, well, that one's sick, so we can't eat that one. Or that one didn't have breakfast, so it's unfair to chase that one down. The lion doesn't care. The lion gets the, the slowest antelope. And life's exactly the same. So you, you have to decide which antelope you wanna be. Because just like the lion, life doesn't give a shit who's at the back. And you have to decide if you wanna be at the back and hope the lion's gonna feel sorry for you when it's hungry, and you can tell him all your excuses, just before he rips your throat out, or you can make sure you're the one at the front by any means necessary. And that's a choice you have to make. And when people truly understand that and they stop externalizing their problems, then they believe they, there's, there's two choices. You either externalize your issues or you, or you believe you have influence over your issues. When bad things have happened to me, when my father died or whatever, I never allowed myself to wake up and think, maybe I have depression. Because it, it, it wasn't even in my realm of, of possibility. It wasn't even ever in my sphere. It was like, I'm upset about this and times are healing, whatever, whatever. I've got work to do, let's get up, let's get done. And, and so I don't see why that's detrimental to anybody. The reason that people got so triggered and upset by what I said is because I attack their belief system. It's like attacking someone's God. It's their, it's their worldview. It, it shapes everything they do. Like if you believe in God or you believe in ghosts or you believe in depression, everything you do is influenced by this belief. And when you attack someone's belief, they're gonna get very desperate to defend it. There's also a large body of evidence saying that depression doesn't exist. Um, feel free to, I don't want to quote it exactly, but I think his name is Lauren Mosher. Um, he was the head of schizophrenic research uh, at the Institute of Mental Health. So he's like the guy. And he concluded that depression is not a real disease because in 100% of cases, there's nothing actually wrong with the brain. He says, I can't detect anything wrong with the brain. All the brain scans they show you in depressed people, you can just take a brain scan of someone having an orgasm. Those are chemicals in the brain. You can see it. That does not mean that the person's got a mental disorder. They, you can see the depression in their brain because they've accepted they're depressed. The, the, the brain didn't change and then make them the depressed. People got the or wrong way around. So yeah, of course, everyone feels depressed temporarily. I've been depressed. Everyone, bad things happen to everybody. You have a choice of let, let it consume you. How did you snap out of your, your unhappiness, depression? Well, uh, I snapped out of it because I understand that it's the only choice there is. Was there a method you did? You know, like... I don't think there's a specific method. You just have to be. You just have to be harsh about the realities of the world. Life doesn't give a fuck about you. Everyone who you're crying to your problems about doesn't really care. And you have, to, you have to get it over with, you know? Like bad things happen to everybody. They're going to happen to everybody. Uh, and then we all die. So you have two choices. You can let the bad things consume you, or you can wake up one day and think, ah, enough of this, and you gotta push forward. And the, the crazy thing is when I say that to people, people say to me, oh, you're crazy. That is exactly how the entire world functioned until this new think bullshit came along. Until this new age crap came along, no one ever sat down and gave up. You look at World War II, People dying all over the place. Who gave up? Everyone just pushed, keep calm, carry on. There's bombs today, got to go to work. That's because that's how people were raised. But now this new think garbage has come and everyone tells me that I'm wrong. Well, we have a whole, you ask asking for the medical proof. The medical proof is the entire, entirety of human history where nobody ever was too depressed to work because they had to fucking eat. And people go on with things. When I was saying depression, I'm talking about the 19 year old in their bedroom with nothing wrong with their life who's saying they're depressed. That's completely different to post-traumatic stress disorder in my mind. Obviously bad things can happen to people and they can affect you. Still, I believe you're a master of your own mind, but I think that's a much harder battle depending on what you went through. But it's really interesting you said that. I watched a TV show about a German girl who survived a plane crash in the 1970s in Peru. The plane blew up in the air or something, it crashed. When she, she was the only survivor, she woke up, she saw her decapitated mother next to her still strapped in the seat. Everyone's dead. She starts walking through the jungle trying to eat, ends up because of her uh, wounds, gets infection. Uh, ends up, sure she's gonna die, passes out in a clearing, gets saved, blah, blah, blah. And uh, they were talking to her what happened once she'd been saved. And she obviously eventually made it back to Germany. Her, f her family originally thought she was dead. Um, she said, well, what happened when you got back? And he said, well, well my dad tried to, to sell a book, but no one bought it. So he told me I had to get a job because we needed, we needed work, we needed money. Um, so about two weeks later, I was working, like doing what? Oh, in a shop? And like, oh, did you go to a psychiatrist? She goes, no, we didn't do that. Like, do you know what I mean? So this is one of the most dramatic things you can possibly go through. And she just went to a store, got a job and, and got over it. Obviously she had her own personal battle, but she pushed forward and now she's doing an interview at age 80 saying, yeah, well, you just have to get on with life. So how, how are and people are going to tell me I'm wrong? I'm like, this, this is the evidence that it is possible.